Although I got into 3D printing through FDM or extrusion-based 3D printing, a couple of years ago, I picked up my first resin printer and was absolutely blown away by the sheer level of detail that this technology was able to capture. And since then, we've covered quite a few different resin 3D printers on this channel. They're sort of following the same theme of what the extrusion or FDM printers did, where the quality is getting better and better, they're getting more and more features, more reliable, more consistent, all while dropping in price, making them more accessible to more people than ever before, which is awesome. Now, initially the main type of resin that was being produced for these hobby level resin printers was model resin. And model resin is great because it typically comes in a wide range of colors and it is able to produce high quality prints. It's relatively inexpensive. However, it is known to be quite brittle, making it less than ideal for functional applications. One of my favorite model resins that I've been using for the past at least year here has been Soriatex Fast Resin. This resin is incredibly low odor, which is very important to me considering that I have to print inside in a very confined space. It is really easy to use and works on just about any printer that I've thrown it on and the cost on it is really, really good, which is also another huge plus. Soriatex has also been taking the charge in creating and offering functional resins for various applications that just this model resin might not be sufficient for. And we've covered a couple of them on this channel. One of them was Soritex Blue, which is their tough resin, and one was Soritex Tenacious, which was their flexible resin. Well, they recently released a new resin called Sculpt Ultra, which has pretty insane heat deflection properties, making it perfect for some really unique applications. And so in today's video, we are going to talk a little bit about this resin, go over its properties, go over what it takes to actually print with this resin. And of course, we're gonna do some printing. I hope you guys are excited. And without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Starting off, let's talk a little bit about the properties of the resin. So the Soriatex Sculpt has actually been out for a little bit now, and it has a heat deflection temperature of 160 Celsius, which is really, really hot. And if that wasn't enough, the Sculpt Ultra takes it a step further at 220 Celsius, which is without a doubt the highest heat deflection temperature I've seen on a resin that's made for just kind of desktop LCD resin printers. If you want to see these resins put to the test or put through the gauntlet, Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, tested out this stuff where he printed out some masks with weight, uh, weights on them and then took a torch to them and shows just how long they were able to hold up being completely engulfed in a flame. So I will place links to that in the description if you guys want to check that out after this video. Sculpt Ultra is advertised as using a composite formulation, which is what allows it to hit these insanely high temperatures. A couple of the use cases mentioned are for mold making as well as for various medical applications due to the fact that this resin is autoclavable. And if you're not familiar with what that is, autoclaving is a process that is commonly used in the medical industry where basically tools or hardware is put inside of this machine called an autoclave where it uses a combination of steam, heat, and pressure to kill things like bacteria and viruses. For those interested in the other technical specifications for this resin, I will go ahead and place them on screen now. And I will also link you guys in the description over to the user guide that has this information as well as the MSDS or a safety data sheet for anyone interested in checking those out. As far as how I see it for my own personal use, I actually have been very interested for some time now in mold making. And I'd always envision myself printing out something like a master and then doing a silicone mold of that master and then casting it with something like resin, which I'm sure I'll still end up doing something along those lines. However, I never even considered the idea of actually printing directly a mold and then being able to use some higher temp materials to then cast directly into the mold. I think that definitely opens up the door to some very unique applications. A couple of years ago, I stumbled across the YouTube channel, The Craftsman, which is an absolutely amazing, artsy, beautiful channel where there is a person that likes to make uh, really like toys or figures. And he does them with all sorts of different mediums. Some of them he sculpts by hand. Uh, other ones he does now incorporate uh, 3D printing into. And about a year ago, he picked up a manual injection molder. And with that, it came with some small aluminum molds that he was able to basically um, pour in the pellets. And then, you know, I don't know if it's casting with injection molding, but uh, pump the plastic into these molds and make copies of them. Well, he also tried to use molds that were printed on a resin printer, but he used standard, from what I saw, standard model resin. And the results were kind of hit or miss. Some were 
pretty good, some weren't so good, but I think that this Soriatek um, Sculpt Ultra would be a fantastic candidate for something like that uh, for some small batch production and certainly a lot cheaper than making aluminum molds for each and every single one and a lot easier to make revisions on. As for printing, this should work with just about any MSLA printer. I'm personally going to be using the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. I love the sandblasted build plate because things stick incredibly well. The fact that it's got the MSLA, uh, or the, I'm sorry, monochromatic LCD screen, which makes it where it's able to cure in just a few seconds. And because again, I am using this indoors and from my experience, typically the more engineer type resins have a little bit more odor at least than the model resins. Having the built-in carbon filter is a huge plus. As far as the environment goes that you're gonna be printing in, you will want to be printing in somewhat of a warmer environment. A lot of these specialty resins have a bit higher viscosity and this is just amplifying even more so when it is colder out or colder around the printer, which can lead to inconsistencies in your printing and possibly a little bit less of a crispness in the resolution. Soriatek recommends a temperature of over 25 Celsius, which ends up being around 77 Fahrenheit, which for me being indoors in Southern California is perfect. But if you are printing in a garage and it is cold, you might need something like a space heater to make sure that it is not going to affect your print or your print quality when using a resin like this. As far as the resin profile goes, there are a few examples that are linked in that user guide I mentioned in the description of this video. For the Mars 2 Pro, it's recommended to have five burn-in layers at 30 seconds per layer, with regular layer cure time set to two and a half seconds per layer. The recommended layer height is 50 microns, which works out for me because that is the typical height I use for all my resin prints. And these speeds are gonna be specifically to monochrome LCD printers. If you're using something like the original Mars, the burn-in time that's recommended is 65 seconds per layer and 10 to 12 seconds roughly for all of your standard layers. Before jumping into anything substantial size-wise, I found a resin test model from Amerilabs that I sliced up and printed out. To be perfectly honest, I didn't realize just how tiny it was until the print had finished. Considering this isn't necessarily a model resin, I was blown away by how good it turned out. I did my best to get some shots of it, but after seeing this, I'm thinking more and more that I might need to invest in a macro lens. After that print, I found a mold that someone had created for a ring over on Thingiverse. It looked like it was designed very well and was a perfect example of something I would actually like to cast later on or in the future when I have the availability to do so. So I went ahead and placed this or downloaded it, imported it, placed it flat, sliced it up and hit print. The ring mold turned out absolutely perfect. They fit together nice and snug and I was very pleased with the end result. I ended up following this up with another mold I found over on Thingiverse of the Make Robot, which also turned out fantastic. After cleaning the mold in IPA though, I did use some paper towels to kind of wipe it down and get rid of some of that IPA that was still on there and I wish I had not. Since the print wasn't fully cured, it did cause it to wear a bit. However, this was definitely my fault and moving forward, I did not apply any pressure on any of the prints until they were done curing. After the molds, I decided to switch it up and print out the afterburner main body, which is a hot end slash extruder combo for the upcoming Voron 0.1 3D printer build I'll be doing. I recently printed a mount of ABS and Although this was just for more of a proof of concept or just for fun, I'm really curious what this would be like if you took the Sculpt Ultra, which is again, the high heat deflection, but kind of, uh, I'd say more on the brittle side and something like their blue resin, which is a higher strength resin and combining the two together, I really think that it would uh, create for some interesting applications and some interesting properties for that resin. And you could also add in something like uh, dyes or pigments to give it that pop, which would make for a really cool 3D printer build, especially around the hot end area. For the last print, I wanted to try something out that was a little bit more experimental. Last week, I was in the Voron Discord and I was talking to some people and just kind of watching some of the conversations going on. And there was mention of somebody who had said, hey, I want to print out this you know, high strength resin to make this printer, all the printed parts out. And there was a question of how would the like brass heat inserts work with resin and nobody really had an answer. So what I ended up doing was, is I printed out the three bed tensioning knobs. I think I printed out two of them to then basically clean them, cure them, and see if I got my soldering iron, if I could actually get the brass heat inserts to press into the plastic. And the prints turned out great, and I tried my best to actually get the heat inserts in, and it did not work. The, the uh, 
resin printed parts just did not wrap around the inserts or melt around the inserts. It didn't really react much at all, to be honest with you. And I tried even applying a little bit of pressure to see if I can get them to press in and the resin actually more so crumbled versus melted. So uh, I would be curious almost to see how the heat inserts would work with a lower temp resin to see if maybe that actually would melt a bit more like I envisioned. But it was a fun test nonetheless and something that I, I went back to the Discord after I tried it the other night and said, yeah, it didn't work for me, guys. So I figured that they'd been so helpful, I would try something out and just let them know that it, it didn't work out for me, unfortunately. Overall, my experience with this resin has been great. I was a little bit concerned at first, just considering it had such a high heat deflection temperature and the fact that it was a composite resin that perhaps it would come with some additional complications. But it printed really, really well. There was a slight odor, like I mentioned, but with the um, the Mars 2 Pro and that carbon filter, I really couldn't smell anything until I actually took the lid off. And um, the parts came out really crisp, like you can see from the footage here. As far as curing goes, I did put them in a, a like DIY cure chamber that I have, and I put them in for roughly 10 minutes. I think I did five minutes roughly on one side, and then kind of changed the direction for another five for roughly 10 minutes in total. And they turned out they turned out nicely. They did come out cured. However, they did come out a little bit tanner than they originally went in. And I think that you could probably get rid of this if you maybe had a little less aggressive of a light or if I had my light a little bit further away. And I also know that some people talk about curing parts underwater, um, especially when working with clear parts to kind of help with the fogginess. And so I wonder if curing underwater could also possibly help with that as well. But I do think that for most of the applications this is gonna be used for, which is functional stuff, that maybe having a little bit of a hue isn't the biggest of deals, but I did at least want to mention that my parts did come out with a little bit of a beach tan. When I do have a proper lab or a garage, I would love to revisit this resin or even take these molds and do some casting, but for now, because I am in my living room, there is only so much that I'm able to do, and I will have to leave that up to you guys. If you do have any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't have the answer, I can definitely reach out to Soraya Tech to see if I can get those answered for you. And like I mentioned earlier, the user guide, the safety data sheet, and uh, a link to the actual resin itself, if you wanna find out more, purchase it, will be in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back every single week and do what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.